a bit of a mixed bag for the cryptocurrency market today. Really good news for Bitcoin, not so good news for Bitcoin, kind of awkward news as well for Bitcoin. Also some Solana news with some interesting details about Solana maybe flipping Ethereum someday. So we'll get into that as well. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's something you're keen on learning more about, it's the kind of content that you appreciate, then I would massively value a quick thumbs up on the thumbs up button. That would be amazing. Shows me and YouTube that you enjoy this kind of content. By the way, if you'd like to earn a safe and simple passive income on your cryptocurrencies, you should get yourself an account over on Celsius. You can earn 6.2% on your Bitcoin, 5.3% on your Ethereum. Great rates on altcoins and stablecoins as well. Use the link down below to start your account and you'll get a $50 Bitcoin bonus. So go ahead and check that out if you want to get started earning some passive income. Now let's go ahead and get into the news. First off, I'd like to point out the awkward news of the day. This is Bitcoin versus the S&P 500. You can see S&P 500 had a nice little rally here. S&P 500 corrected here. Well, look what came down right along with it. Bitcoin did. Come on, Bitcoin, what are you doing here, man? It feels unfair to be so correlated sometimes with the stock markets, with the equity markets, because they just hit a new all-time high. This right here, by the way, that was a new all-time high for the S&P 500 index. We didn't get a new all-time high for Bitcoin. Bitcoin was down like 35% at that point, but they got a new all-time high. It's not fair. It's not fair, man. Anyway, of course, we remain... A, a risk asset class. And so when there is a perceived potential turn in the markets, investors drop crypto pretty quickly. Most of these guys are just in Bitcoin or Ethereum, but all the altcoins get dragged along into the mayhem of a Bitcoin dump simply because the liquidity and the pairs and stuff across the market for Bitcoin are so interconnected with the altcoin scene that when one goes down, the rest of them tend to go along. With it, not just, of course, the uh, S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100 also, which is very tech stock heavy, looking rough today. Still investors out there being afraid of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. I mean, come on, guys. Come on. The Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates like 0.25%. Oh, no. So scary. We're still at a real negative rate, even once that happens, of like six point. 6%. Seriously, inflation's out of control. Yes, the Fed's raising rates, but they're not going to raise rates like 10%. By the end of the year, we might be up to 1%. Maybe. Maybe. And people are freaking out. Come on, guys. What is going on here? That is redonkulous. But again, we have an entire crowd of investors here that are looking at crypto as a risk asset. And when tech stocks start going down, we do have a strong correlation generally with tech stocks. When tech stocks start coming down, crypto tends to get hit along with it, unfortunately. So hopefully people chill out about the whole Federal Reserve thing. Yeah, they're going to raise interest rates. We've known this for a long time. Yes, there's tapering. We've known this for a long time. Yes, inflation's out of control. These are all known things, yet the market still gets jitters about it. Anyway, so that's the kind of awkward news today, our unfortunate level of correlation right now with the uh, equity markets. But here's some good news for you. Before we get to some more bad news, <clears throat> here's some good news for you. It's, it's, a, it's a bad news sandwich with good stuff in the middle. I think that's not how you're supposed to do it. But anyway, that's how we're doing it today. Tonga is going to copy El Salvador's bill making Bitcoin legal tender, says a former MP, former MP. So he's you know, not currently in government, but anyway... This is, I think, been the plan. I know there's a lot of people um, who have been talking about Tonga. Tonga has been talking about it basically ever since El Salvador did it. Here it is in the news again. They're saying that their country could adopt Bitcoin by November, which is a long time, guys. Come on, you can move a bit quicker than that. But, you know, it's Tonga. Things move slowly. It's a super, super laid back Pacific Island nation. So, you know, I guess November, that's fine. That's fine. We, we'll take it. I'll take it by the end of the year. That'll be cool, guys. But this would obviously be a massive, massive deal. And I know, look, Tonga's a very small Pacific Island nation. But El Salvador was just a small 
Central American nation. The thing to understand here is that it all builds up into a big picture. Once Tonga's done it, well, then we now have two countries where Bitcoin is legal tender. And then who's next? Because there'll be a next. And before you know it, we've got 20, 30, 40 countries by the end of the decade that have made Bitcoin into legal tender. That, that is freaking crazy when that happens. Tonga, of course, a great potential candidate for Bitcoin legalization because it is a country that depends very heavily on remittances. And so it's a country that has basically been getting screwed for decades by these remittance companies taking huge percentages of these people's money. So yes to Bitcoin in Tonga. Good news. Please do it, guys. It'll be awesome. It'll be good for Tonga. Good for everybody. Let's, let's get it going. Now for some more Bad news. Well, I guess we've gone from the awkward to the good to the bad. It's open face sandwich news today. Pakistan plans to ban cryptocurrencies as their stance hardens. So a central bank government report recommends declaring all cryptocurrencies illegal. <sighs> Another one? Come on, Pakistan. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? That's ridiculous. One, I just... When a country says they want to ban cryptocurrencies, it just says you have no idea what cryptocurrencies are. You're never going to ban them. Oh, you're going to make it illegal to do payments, which is, you know, ridiculous. You're going to make it illegal for people to have trusted on and off ramps to basically all that Pakistan is going to do, just like all that China has ever managed to do, by the way, is create a big freaking black market. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing Pakistan will accomplish by trying to ban cryptocurrencies. They'll make a black market for cryptocurrencies, just the same way China has, just the same way anyone who has cracked down on cryptocurrency has. Crypto's not going away. Pandora is out of the box. You can't put her back in. Chaos has escaped. That's it, man. That's it. That's it. WTF. We're at a time when most countries are actually going in the opposite direction. We see a lot of countries trying as hard as possible to say, hey, we want the cryptocurrency business to come here. Texas, we want the cryptocurrency business to come here. Spain, we want the cryptocurrency businesses to come here. Lots of other countries, yes, 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 come to us cryptocurrency businesses. We want your business. We want your money in our country. Pakistan taking the opposite route saying, get out of here, guys. Not a good decision, Pakistan, I hope. Cooler heads will prevail in the end, and that Pakistan will not try to ban cryptocurrencies. It would be bad for the Pakistani people. Of course, I want everybody to have access to cryptocurrencies. So, yeah, I hope they get it right. But uh, Pakistan's a big country, big population. Would not be good to have them taken out of the equation. We want them in the equation. We want everybody in the equation, man, because crypto is the future. Now let's talk about Solana. According to a Bank of America report, Solana is primed to beat Ethereum and to be the visa of the digital asset ecosystem. Big, big call from the Bank of America. Big call indeed. Now, we've seen a lot of interest into Solana, a lot of applications building on Solana. And I think that the massive scalability at layer one for Solana is something that's very, very attractive for the wider market. Now you have to understand Ethereum still has the massive developer lead, um, the massive application lead, the massive total value locked lead. They are heavily in the lead right now and everything except for, well, I guess, I guess they're winning the fees, right? They have the biggest fees. They're number one for fees, which is not a good thing. <laughs> you do not want to be number one for the most expensive fees. Using Solana costs a fraction of a penny. Using Solana uh, is pretty enjoyable. It's pretty easy to do. But Ethereum, man, Ethereum can cost stupid amounts of money. If you guys have used Ethereum, you know exactly what the heck I'm talking about. So I think right now we are at a stage where whether it's going to be Solana or another blockchain like, you know, Avalanche or Phantom or whatever, we're at a stage right now where there is a lot of pressure being put on Ethereum from the competitors who are hungry for market share, hungry for recognition, and who have good technology that actually works today. I mean, I know Solana goes down from time to time, but, you know, for the most part, it works totally fine with really, really cheap fees. So 
interesting to see Bank of America looking at other blockchains and saying, yo, Ethereum, what's going on here, man? You got some good competitors and they're coming for you. You can see though, um, Solana not actually at the top of the price mover list this week in spite of the positive nod from the Bank of America. We've seen Oasis Network near uh, protocol as well among uh, Harmony. All these other layer one blockchains are getting a lot of interest from the market, especially the ones outside of the top 50. We've seen Oasis go from like number 100 up to number 80 already this week. Near has gone from 24 to 16 in terms of place on the market cap. Harmony as well rising. We have all these great layer one blockchains with cool applications, huge incentive funds for people to come in and take advantage of. The the gauntlet has been laid down. The competition is on right now for Ethereum to put up or shut up. And of course we have proof of stake coming mid year, but that's not gonna help the fee situation, unfortunately. In the meantime, you can use all these other blockchains for a fraction of a penny. There you go. We also see Phantom on the up here, $7 billion total value locked up uh, 20% this week. Looking to come for uh, Solana potentially. I mean, if it keeps on this trend, Solana total value locked down 10% this week, Phantom up 20%, money moving into the Phantom ecosystem. Big incentives program, of course, as well as um, Andre Krohn launching a very exciting new application, which has implications for users of most of the top Phantom applications. So no wonder we see that money flowing into Phantom this week. So we could see Phantom flipping Solana as well. So Solana might flip Ethereum, Phantom might flip Solana. Who's gonna win in the end in the game of blockchains? Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, it's exciting times. Also this week we saw Massive amounts of total value locked flowing into the Oasis network, which of course was the biggest gainer of the week from the layer one blockchain space. But a, a big, big amount of money flowing into the Oasis network applications. They just announced a $200 million uh, ecosystem fund backed by Binance. So I think we're going to see a lot more people talking about Oasis Network again. We haven't talked about Oasis Network on the channel for a while now. We talked about it a bit last year, but now they're really starting to do things. People are really starting to pay attention to Oasis Network and what they're doing. And I think we're going to hear more about them as they continue to build out and release new applications on their network. Final bit of news for you from today. Mark Cuban, billionaire Mark Cuban, has come out and said that 80% of his new investments are into crypto, which is pretty big. Pretty big. I mean, that's, uh, assumedly, Mark Cuban is bringing a decent amount of money into the market when he talks about new investments, right? Well, he is investing into the crypto space. Another Shark Tank guy, just like Kevin O'Leary. No, there's another Shark Tank guy, too, who was doing some crypto stuff last week or something I saw. These guys getting into the crypto game in a very, very big way. 80% of his new investments are going into crypto, which I would say would probably be around, I think, what a lot of uh, crypto investors would be into, right? Uh, me, for example, I also buy stocks. I have got a stock portfolio going, so I'm not 100% of my funds going into crypto. I also put some of that money uh, into the stock markets. So maybe I'm like 95% of my new investments going into crypto. But that of course is your question for today. What percent of your new investments go into cryptocurrencies? Are you 100% of your investment money going into crypto? Maybe it's 50% and 50% stocks, or maybe maybe you're throwing some gold in there or something as well. Maybe you're a metals uh, investor and you're throwing some money into metals as well. Curious to hear what your percentage is down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.